What's up, you amazing viewers and listeners tuning in from Homegrown Cannabis Co.'s YouTube channel. I'm your host, Chronic, from the Cannabis Chronicles on Instagram and YouTube, and your host of this amazing podcast called the Homegrown Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button or follow button from whichever platform you're tuning in from so you can show Homegrown Cannabis Co. some love as they make this show possible. Now, before we get into anything else, What do you need to start growing? You need top-notch cannabis seeds. And that's kind of the topic of today's episode. And if you do want to browse a wide selection of top-notch cannabis seeds, I am going to make a note of it at the start to mention homegrowncannabisco.com. It's an amazing selection. It is the sponsor of this show. And I think they have some of the absolute best genetics I've ever grown in my life, especially autoflowers and just, I mean, everything, honestly. It's it's top tier. But I mentioned that for a purpose. Now, generally every episode we have two segments, but today I really want to focus on just the top tips for success when it comes to getting 100% germination methods with your cannabis seeds. It's a topic that I think needs to be discussed more. I would like to tell more growers my tips and tricks from other various growers and sources that I've learned them from that have allowed me to guarantee myself every time I pretty much pop a seed, if it's not a dud genetically, then it's going to produce a taproot. Then it's just up to me not to kill my plant, which, hey, I can't promise 100% results with that because even me, I make mistakes, right? We're all growers, we're all human and all that. So before we jump into this episode, remember to smoke a big old bowl, grab your favorite dab, or maybe snag an edible you love, and let's break into some seriously awesome content to help you growers get established at either learning how to grow and germinate your seeds or bettering your results when it comes to germination. Let's begin. Now, like I said, it's it's all about that germination success, right? I mean, that's pretty much what we're looking for. You know, you, you don't want to buy a pack of seeds and then only be able to germinate one of them if there's 12 of them in the pack or even four of them in the pack. You want all of them to germinate. That's dollars spent. That's money. And you want to be able to have some guaranteed yield at least. Now, that's the thing. I can guarantee you 100% germination rates with these tips and tricks if you follow them and you have to follow them pretty specifically and it is a little variable dependent on your area with your water and things like that on some of the measures that you might have to take to make sure that your water's safe for your seedlings and your you know tap roots and all that fun stuff and germination so the first place I think we need to begin is seedlings you know well let me backtrack. The first place we really need to begin is where do you get top-notch cannabis seeds and are genetics really important? I've mentioned this in many other episodes, but if you're a new listener, I always like to break into this, this, you know, podcast, like, you know, maybe you are potentially a new listener and you're new to cultivation. So let's break you into what you should be looking for. Genetics are a big role in what your grow is going to even be like. If you have poor genetics, it doesn't matter how good of you know fundamentals how many awesome uh you know products you have purchased for your plant um whether you're running co2 great lights it doesn't matter how many things dialed in in your environment you may produce a scraggly plant a hermaphrodite you may produce a plant that doesn't want to grow it could be a mutant there are a lot of things that come with poor genetics So when it comes to purchasing good genetics, you always want to support breeders or companies that are top quality companies in the sense of they actually have a very stable um, source of, you know, strain options from their breeders that have been commercially stabilized. Now, your boutique breeders might release F1s or F2s or various versions as testers or like uh, pheno hunt type seed packs where you could get a variety of phenos however they're generally stable genetics they're not unstable genetics when it comes to poor genetics when we talk about that in the community it's generally what we call pollen chuckers and you really don't want to buy from someone who's just throwing pollen on a plant and selling those seeds without doing any test on the offspring or anything like that or any really inbreeding i mean not to say the f1s can't 
be sold as packs. But generally, when F1s are sold, it's because the mother plants and the, or the parent plants um, are very, very pheno hunted and have been tested. So that's my little spiel on why genetics are important um, and why you should seek top notch breeders and top notch companies such as Homegrown Cannabis Co. Um, and I won't pitch that anymore. I don't want to feel like you guys, you know, like digging that at you, but they are a great company. Um, I think for novices and veterans alike, there's lots of options. Even if you snag from other people you enjoy, um, they have a lot of strains that maybe if you aren't able to snag from your one breeder, uh, you might be able to uh, experience through Homegrown Cannabis Co. Um, they do lots of discount codes and deals, which is something I always promote people to look for. If you do have a company that you like to go to or a breeder, um, you know, always take advantage of their discounts, deals, giveaways, things like that. So find top notch seeds. Next, when it comes to top notch seeds, you need top notch water. I know that's kind of funny, but generally distilled water or spring water for like in a bottle is going to be the best kind of water for you. Uh, distilled water being the best. Uh, that's generally what I like to use. This last round of seeds, I just used spring water um, in the in the bottle that we had, and it was totally fine. My I had 100% germination success, so no problem. I mentioned this because. Uh, for those living in harsh areas, tap water for seedlings and germination, I would never, ever recommend tap water unless you have an RO filter or something like, you know, reverse osmosis water um, that you have access to and you're, you know, properly changing the pH and everything. I would otherwise not even remotely use tap water. Tap water will absolutely kill tap roots um, on forming seedlings. And um, sometimes seeds won't even germinate just because of how harsh the minerals are in the water or potentially some states put a lot of chlorine or various other chemicals in the water, um, you know, and you could find high amounts of lead and things like that, depending on what state you're in or city you're in. So you don't want to um, use tap water for seedlings that you'll have very, very much lower success rates. And we're not here about lower success rates. We're here about a hundred percent success rates. So, um, yes, get, get a gallon of distilled water for seedling use. I promise you that gallon will last you dozens and dozens of seeds. You could even just grab a bottle of uh, spring water, you know, um, if that's the cheapest and easiest option, if you're not going to be blowing through seeds, that bottle will still last you probably upwards of 50 seeds. You know, you're only using a, a very, very small fraction of water. Um, I generally use about two thirds a cup or less when I'm germinating and the rest of the water that is extra after I generally put germ genie in it and uh, I just go ahead and prep the soil before I plant my seedlings. Um, so it's, it's made use if there's any anything extra. Now, the reason water, I, I'm gonna, the water and seeds are so important is because if you don't have good water, you don't have good seeds, I can't promise you guys 100% germination methods with the next technique that I'm gonna tell you. So it, it includes two options, so there's two various methods. I, I personally recommend, um, you know, if you're a novice following, um, something like the paper towel method and even veterans, I, 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 if you're having trouble with your seeds, go ahead and use the paper towel method. It's probably one of the easiest. I mean, it's been used for years and years and years and years. And it's one of the easiest ways to get your seeds germinating and make sure that you are placing your paper towels inside of a like plastic bag or a propagation tray and dome. Um, I always forget to mention that. That is one thing I always forget to mention because I always, uh, you know, I, it's a it, it's a normal thing for me uh, to do these steps, but it's something I always forget to mention to everyone. Make sure you're placing it in a paper towel. And if you're or in a paper towel, in a plastic bag, like a Ziploc bag. And if you're doing that, you're leaving part of it open um, and you're going to want to put your seeds um, into the paper towel method. Um, and so this will I'll go the step by step method with the paper towel method. First, you can find this on Homegrown Cannabis Co's blog. Um, you can find it on the forum, homegrowncannabisco.community. You can find this on their 
pretty sure that Kyle Cushman went over this on YouTube. I'm pretty positive. If not, I know we talked about it on YouTube. I have some other podcasts about it. So this is going to be a quick run over of what to do. So you're going to grab some paper towels. You're going to get a, a plate or a dish or a propagation tray of some sort or a plastic baggie. And you're going to go ahead and soak a paper towel in lukewarm water. Um, not warm water. You don't want warm, scalding hot or anything. You want lukewarm to cooler water. And you're going to go make sure that the paper towel is damp, but not sopping to where it's like sitting in a pool of water. Uh, but you do want it to where it can be, you know, if you squeeze it, like a little puddle might form on your hand of like five to six drops. So that's about how wet you want it. You want to place your seeds, uh, you know, decent about half an inch to an inch apart, depending on how many seeds you're running and how long you're gonna be letting them sit in the paper towel. Cause sometimes the tap roots can get pretty long and you don't want them to grow into each other. Um, so I would place them decent apart. If they're different strains, make sure to do different paper towels or have them labeled some way, um, do different baggies, that kind of thing. And you're gonna place your baggie, your propagation tray or your plate with your paper towel and seeds um, into a warm, dark area for 24 to 48 hours. Now how to get a hundred percent success with that. It's the water mixture you use for your plate and your paper towel. So you're going to use one third hydrogen peroxide to two thirds distilled water or spring water. And you're going to use that mixture specifically. And if you want to even add a, a oomph to that, add one to two drops of germ genie, one drop for half a cup of water, two drops for a full cup of water. Um, that's what I recommend. Generally, I do not have any problems. There might be a dud here and there that when I say dud, like I might have, I, I might have uh, accidentally dropped and or crushed some seeds trying to get them in their containers. So that is what I mean by dud. Uh, it's my mistake. So grower mistake. Um, but no, generally I literally get a hundred percent. I don't, I don't think there's been a time I've got a less than a hundred percent in the last, um, even the last like year and a half, I think at the beginning I was struggling with my rates. I was like 60% for a good three months of popping seeds. And then finally, um, I learned to use a third hydrogen peroxide to two thirds distilled water. So that is the paper towel method. After 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours, you should check them once a day. Uh, you should see tap roots and you should see um, them forming and then you can plant them. And then, you know, that, that whole process after the fact, that's up to you to keep them alive. Uh, you know, that's not 100% guaranteed. I'm just guaranteeing your tap roots. <laughs> so the reason I always tell these two methods is because it's completely personal preference. And sometimes the second method makes more sense for growers if they're popping larger amounts of seeds and they don't want to waste paper towels. I will say it's a little more um, green of a footprint in the sense of your paper towel cost, unless you are composting and you are scrapping your pa paper towels inside of a compost bin or something like that, then it doesn't matter, I guess. So you're just giving good old carbon to your compost pile. So um, yeah, let's break into the second 100% success rate. Um, bit. We already talked about genetics. We talked about the importance of water. We talked about my one third and it's not mine. Okay. So I shouldn't say that. I should not say that. It, that was not mine. So this was a mixture that was actually, uh, brought to my attention by a gentleman on Instagram. And, uh, he was a, he's a very dedicated grower and hopefully in the future, I will have him on the podcast and I will ask him this. I'm gonna keep it a surprise. Honestly, I'm gonna keep it a surprise. I wanna keep this one a surprise for you, growers, because he's a pretty big deal. He's, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say Kyle Cushman's a pretty big deal, like that level of pretty big deal. So uh, I'm gonna keep it a surprise for you, for you growers. But there is a gentleman, I did not create this method. There's a gentleman who shared it on his Instagram and on his, uh, uh, a few other, like an email that he, he sent out, and I believe on a Facebook page, but I saw it on Instagram and he shared it. And that was about six months into my growing experience when I was first growing back um, about two years ago, two and a half years ago. And uh, yeah, it changed my world. I have 100% success rate with all of my methods. I use the paper towel method most of the time. If I'm in a rush or if I'm in 
If I'm germinating more than 10 strains, I generally use this method because it makes more sense for me. So here is the method to my madness on this. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, this isn't my madness, but let's begin. You grab your little, little tiny germination cups. Other, some people use those tiny little shot glass solo cups. Uh, some people use, um, I have these little tiny, I don't even know what they're from. They're like, they gotta be like uh, ketchup cups or like little, little salt cups for a restaurant to go type thing, butter cups, you know? Um, those types of things. My fiance had them forever ago. And I, when she had her donut business back in Wyoming, uh, we had a ton of things left over when we moved and I made use of them like popsicle sticks for labeling and all sorts of things. So these are little tiny cups. They're very small. Um, if you're on, if you're listening, I would say they're about a quarter inch, not quarter inch, a half inch in height may be pushing three quarters an inch, but they are about one full inch in diameter. So very small little cups. I fill them with that one third, two thirds mixture. Now that mixture I, I do in like a little Pyrex dish that's, or Pyrex cup that, that's like a one cup Pyrex, you know, like measuring cup um, or a two cup one. And I only make a cup that way I don't overflow it. Um, but that is generally how I mix my seeds. And now when I fill that water, I place my seeds into that water for the same allotted time. They soak in the water. Now, 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 for those listening from the first episode, you think I would leave you without any extra tips this second time and just saying, soak them in some water and put them in the same place and do the same things as the beginning? Because that is what you do. You put these in a warm, dark place for 24 to 48 hours and let them soak. But see, see, see I have, I have a solution to your your problems growers okay i feel your cold state pains when you have negative temperatures outside and the inside of your grow room is cold as ice and you can't get your seeds to germinate because it's freezing well here's the thing nobody ever talks about it seedling heat mats on thermostats i said it it's a thing you guys should absolutely use uh if there's a, there's a few brands that are pretty good i don't know all the brands off the top of my head that actually produce seedling heat mats with thermostat packages i'm gonna tell you the one i know it's the one that sent me one to review and i dude i freaking love this thing i had purchased a seedling heat mat on a thermostat for my local garden center um i can't i don't remember the brand it's it's a green and black one i can tell you that much uh it works fine it does not I don't think the probe on it did. I, I swear it's like three to four degrees off because I have to set it to about 78 and I temp my seeds and they're roughly 70, which, you know, I say three degrees, but I put them in a propagation tray. So I always expect at least two degrees from the propagation tray to three degrees. So I expect, you know, maybe a five degree difference, but like they're pretty those those that one doesn't heat up after usage after prolonged periods of being on um the one i've been using can stay on for like five days straight and it's golden um but that's the spider farmer one um and i like that one uh you can i do have a code for them i say it in every video if i ever mention them that way you can save some money but i can't say it anymore because of issues with um being censored and things like that so uh if you do want to look for the code you can look for the code on various places like uh my youtube channel the cannabis chronicles and things like that i've mentioned it before or you know just don't even use it if you don't want to use it don't worry if you don't want spider farmer no worries there's other thermostats out there grab one from a local center but that is literally the magic and key to success uh, I've lived in cold states. And when I say cold states, I've lived in cold, 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 cold states. I mean, those ones aren't legal yet. So, you know, for those listeners, I always advocate follow your state laws. Wink, wink. I'm just kidding. No, follow your state laws, guys. I'm just, I'm totally, you know, I advocate for uh, us to get a legal means to success of getting everything federally legalized. But for those who are living in legal states like Massachusetts, um, Colorado, parts of California, Washington, um, I don't know. I can't think of all the states that are super duper cold that have, uh, I think Oklahoma gets cold. I don't know. 
we'll, we'll have to figure this, these cold states out. Um, but I know Colorado does get cold. I know Washington gets very cold. And for people who live out there, uh, generally, if you can't heat your grow room with a heater or your it's way too expensive on your electric bill to run your heater to heat your whole house and you just do like a fireplace or something like that um, or a space heater for the room. Um, it's what a lot of people do. Uh, heat, heat mats, seedling heat mats are the best. Or sometimes what some growers will do is they will put a propagation dome like a like a, the bottom of the tray with a little bit of space, but like black out the baggie to make sure like no lights getting to the baggie on top of their light in their grow room if it's not crazy hot. Like I'm talking an LED board, not an HPS. You'll just like annihilate your seeds and catch them on fire. Um, but I'm talking LED. LED will warm them up and mimic that warm temperature that they want, warm, humid temperature they want. So that is also some things I've seen on the homegrown forum where people have posted solutions to their problem. But the, the, the way to not, in a sense, uh, have to DIY that solution is to grab a heat mat. They're very, they're really not expensive. Even if you don't go with spider farmer, cause I think spider farmer is a little more expensive in the sense of like purchasing from a local garden center. Um, you could probably find one fairly cheaper, uh, locally. I'm sure. If you have grow shops around, most grow shops carry them nowadays because that's a very popular thing for cold states. So check your local grow shops, call around. Um, you can check Amazon. You can check, uh, check out Spider Farmer if you do. I like them because they support me and they support a lot of growers in this community. So I support those who support, right? But anyways, it's a, and also it's a great product. I, look, I'm serious. You can leave it on for hours and hours and hours on end and it stays legitimately nice and hot or not hot well i mean you could get it pretty hot it's on a thermostat but it's nice and warm and it's the same thermostat that i was using for my leopard geckos so uh it's just their version of it but same board same probes same temperature um and the heat mat is same quality so i, I gotta I gotta be honest they good good job um but yeah that's how i get 100 percent success one third distilled water one third hydrogen peroxide to two thirds water. That's always the, I'm going to repeat that for you growers. <laughs> One third hydrogen peroxide to two thirds distilled water or spring water for you growers to get absolute success. It's the water mixture I always use for my paper towel soaking or where how I soak my seeds. You know, make sure to soak them for 24 to 48 hours. If you don't necessarily see a tap root after 24, you should always go 48 hours. Sometimes I'll even go a third, uh, you know, a prolonged third day and uh that's that's generally you know some of sometimes those are like the older seeds and things like that but honestly i don't even really have problems with my older seeds my older seeds pop just fine in that solution and sometimes if you really have an old old seed for those veterans popping like super older seeds like maybe 20 year old seeds 15 year old seeds or even older um you can use very, very fine sandpaper and scratch the surface of the seed pod because it will allow the surface of the seed pod to become more, more porous, I believe is, is the proper way to explain this without getting super sciencey and allow it to absorb uh, actually like what's around it and uh, give it a little more revitalization to that taproot, that sleeping taproot inside. So that is the best ways that you can get 100% success rate with your seeds. Um, remember warm, dark, humid areas is generally what you want. So if you can't produce a humid area, use those propagation trays, use those Ziploc bags, whatever you have to do to produce a humid area, keep that humidity contained without losing the moisture and, and also suffocating your seeds because that's, you know, you don't want to close your Ziploc bag all the way and suffocate your seeds. Don't do that. So that is how you get 100% success with cannabis seeds. And like I said, you need to start with top-notch cannabis seeds. So definitely support Homegrown Cannabis Co. for allowing this show to happen. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm, I'm trying to make sure I 
really thought everything through and gave you guys my full process and, and how I germinate seeds. I do have videos online of these processes that I've, I've done on my channel, The Cannabis Chronicles on YouTube and Homegrown Cannabis Code definitely has videos on this. Um, and if you check our community for that one, the one method where growers put on the light that that has been done several times um that's on homegrown cannabis code dot community and you can sign up for free lots of growers to ask questions from um i generally hang around there and go read all this stuff nowadays because uh i'm back on instagram but i don't know how long so we'll see and uh yes but i am chronic from the Cannabis Chronicles, like I said. And I'm your host every single Wednesday to bring you guys educational content and help you help you be successful um, with your growth. And hopefully, you uh, from this episode, you gain increased success rates. If you do have any issues whatsoever, if you're watching on YouTube, comment down below. If you're on Spotify or any other Apple Plague, you know, all that fun stuff. Um, you can comment at, you can tag at chronic on the forum, or you can go DM me on Instagram and you can ask me questions. Um, you know, I'm happy to help. I'm happy to diagnose your issues. Um, generally diagnosing issues is, is taking in the variables of your environment. So, um, if you, Come to me for help. Expect me to ask a bunch of questions just about what you're doing. I don't think you're uh, uh, doing something wrong in the sense. I just got to get an idea of the parameters that you're growing with to make sure we can figure out all the solutions. And if the seeds are the issue, then we'll figure out the seeds uh, and what company or breeder or, or maybe um, you, you are breeding the seeds yourself. We'll talk about how to mature your own seeds a little bit better. And I have different podcasts on, um, breeding and, and talking about proper ways to go about it and, and things like that. So I hope you all enjoyed this without further ado, go ahead and rip another good old bong rip or dab rip or take another edible and get blazed for the day. Um, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy I'm chronic and uh, I'll be back with the homegrown podcast every single week. Much love, happy growing, and peace.